Hi class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and this is a continuation of the study of trigonometric substitutions when we uh, integrate certain integrals. <laughs> and in this case, if you've been tracking through the series, we left off at this integral. This integral just fails to exhibit the uh, structure that allows us to integrate using a U substitution or just kind of an anti-chain rule process. So we need another process, we need another technique. And this technique is called a tri trigonometric substitution. And in attacking this integral, we're gonna take advantage of some identities. I hope you've also seen, if need be, a review of the identities that we're gonna use in this case. The Pythagorean identity cosine squared plus sine squared equals one, which leads to algebraically this level, cosine squared is one minus sine squared. And also this identity will be coming in, not in this video, but in a future video. So let's kind of keep our eye on this as we tackle this integral. Here's what I mean. Since this doesn't exhibit the structure that we need to compute this integral by hand, we're going to kind of impose some structure to it. We're gonna make a deliberate choice. And that deliberate choice is going to be related to this variable x. Now, if you look over here, one minus sine squared is the same as cosine squared. We're gonna leverage that fact. You'll see how it all comes in here in a minute. We're gonna leverage that fact and we're gonna replace x with sine of theta. We're just gonna make a claim. Now, one of the beautiful things about mathematics is we can make things happen and then just deal with the consequences. So we're gonna make this thing happen. We're gonna let x equal the sine of theta. Now this is not just a random choice. Again, it's coming from this thing over here. One minus sine squared. One minus sine of theta squared. Since one minus sine of theta squared is the same as cosine squared, that's gonna be really useful to us as we change the structure of this integral, you'll see. So we're gonna let x be the sine of theta to use this identity, but we have to do some more work as well because we also remember how this dx here. So as we substitute something in place of x, we're also going to have to substitute something appropriate in the place of dx to keep this integral equivalent as we adapt its structure. So let's find out. If x is the sine of theta, then what would dx be? Let's find out the derivative of x with respect to theta, otherwise known as dx e theta. The derivative of sine of theta is cosine of theta. Just algebraically manipulate this. dx is therefore equal to the cosine of theta times d theta. Just multiply the d theta over. So we're going to make two very deliberate, intentional, and strategic moves. Move number one, we're going to let x equal sine of theta. Move number two, therefore dx is going to equal cosine of theta d theta. So we've made some very deliberate and strategic moves here so that the structure that was lacking initially will be evident, you'll see, when we get there. The first move was to let x equal the sine of theta. So this integral now will read one over the square root of, instead of one minus x squared, we're gonna replace x with the sine of theta. And remember that integral gets multiplied by that delta x, that little change in x, and that dx is equivalent now to cosine theta d theta. And so from this strategic move, this decision we've made to let x equal sine of theta, our integral now is equivalently expressed as you see here. Now, maybe you're wondering, how does that make things any better? Well, just hold on, watch this. There's a couple of really awesome things that happen now. Awesome thing number one, one minus sine of theta squared. We have an identity for that. Recall that one minus sine of theta squared is the same thing as cosine squared. And the square root of cosine squared is just cosine. And now I hope you see it. 
one over cosine theta times cosine of theta is just one. So this is the beautiful thing here. By making this strategic move, our integral goes from this lacking structure, we don't know how to do it, and it becomes the integral of just one d theta. Now, the integral of one d theta is just theta. Don't forget your integration constant plus c. So our result is just theta plus c. Now, we are gonna do one last move because our original problem was involving x. We now have an answer for this integral involving theta. But what's the relationship between theta and x? Could we have a final answer that's in terms of x? Yes. Come back over here. Remember x equals the sine of theta? So from uh, your pre-calculus days, you may recall that we now can say that theta is the inverse sine of x, or sometimes we say the arc sine of x. So we're gonna replace that theta with either inverse sine or arc sine, it doesn't matter, you can use whichever one you prefer. So we're gonna say that the integral of this is now arc sine plus c. Now, we're going to check that in the next video. So thanks for joining us now, but do click on the next video so you can be uh, have some satisfaction that it is true that the antiderivative of this really is the arc sign. So click on the next video, and please click on the Advantage logo and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.